Hello, welcome to the Britain's Hidden History. I'm Ross, and today we are going up Arthur's butt. <laughs> okay, just to interrupt for a second to give you an idea where we are and what we're talking about today, okay? This is a map copied from King um, Arthur King of Glamorgan and Gwent by Wilson and Blackett. Because what we're looking at is the situation in the 6th century, possibly 7th century, and how long it went on for, who knows. This is not the Norman castles, this is the Welsh stroke British castles before, okay? So here's Somerset, England, this is the, the 7, I'll show you the, the Google Maps version as well. This is what uh, Adam Wilson calls the wheel defence system. So, for example, you've got Penta Myrig, the town of Myrig, father of Arthur. So this would form like a ring. So in this case, you've got a lot of castles on the south coast. Plug in the gaps. These are high cliffs along here. And these plug the landing points, which are the beaches and river estuaries uh, that you would be able to get a, you know, an attacking force up. And this forms like a sort of wheel around Penta Myrig. And then you've got the Ely Castle Ring, which is using these rivers here. And then further up to the east, we've got towards Gwent. Caerleon is a major one, because obviously this is where the river's getting narrower. There's a major crossing point around here. There's a big circle of forts. All this is detailed in Arthur King, Glamorgan and Gwent. It's really fantastic. The big one, though, the one he calls the sort of the centre of it all, is Carai, the sort of castles, which is... That massive hill fort you see called, uh, or next to the place called Rue Sison, Ridge of the Saxons. And you'll see us, well, three videos up there already about that, where King Arthur beat the Saxons, all that kind of stuff. And you can see that in great detail, massive hill fort. I'm just going to zoom in slightly. And then if you go slightly up from there, around this area, you will find um, about here, this clan Trissant. And this is just a sketch. You'll see on the proper map here how these hills form a kind of wall. And this is a choke point if you're coming through. And then, actually, it's quite well drawn, this. So you've got the valley choke point, choke point going that way as well. All right, so this is the... You can see this is the map of South Wales. And I've centred it on Clantricent. Uh, we probably hear it. It's very famous. The arches of Clantricent, fought at Crecci and Agincourt. There's Cardiff, the capital down the south coast, Penarth, which used to be the sort of docks for Cardiff. Obviously got its own docks built in this industrial area. Newport, uh, Caerleon, all these places. But this here, as you can see, it's not, not very large. Really. And there's the M4, the main road archery, which has always been one of the major routes across Wales through the ages. So we'll try and zoom in on Clan Trissant. Just to give you an idea here, so it's known as a medieval town. What we're looking at today is very much 6th century, okay? We're looking back at the early stuff, pre-Norman, pre-all that kind of thing. So there's Clantricent's castle. You just saw a picture of that. That sits this. This would have been the spot. One of the things you notice, uh, it's always a giveaway, with Norman-type castles or invading castles, they tend to be in the town where you keep an eye on people and, and run it, you know, almost like a big police house, if you like. So whether there was a more ancient castle there, I don't know. Whereas if you are defending the population, like you saw with the fortress, the forts then tend to be in good lockout positions because you're looking at external threats. Castles in town, you're more worried about keeping the lid on the people. Caerphilly Castle is the best example. you got one of the biggest uh, castles in Europe, second biggest in Britain, in Caerphilly Castle, right in the middle of the town. Keep an eye on things like a massive police station, if you like. Sign of power. And then you've got the Welsh one up behind the Travellers West pub, up on the hill, where you can see invading armies and you can actually defend the town. So there's a clue right here, okay? Billy Wint, you'll see that's a little tower. I think it's Napoleonic or something. Not a big interest for us. This area, as we're proposing, well, I'm proposing anyway, that the 5th, 6th century uh, defences would have been which then covers this valley coming in and out here. And then, as you'll also see, to make this work, you'd have to have the other side here. Now, the overall situation, oh, just to fill you in. So you've got like a line of big fort there. This is a huge hill, you'll see that one. There's Slantricent. 
Here's Rue Sison, Zucarai. It's a shame in a pub, you can't tell how big these hills are. Look at the other videos, you'll see this one today. Uh, Rue Sison, let's get it right. It's probably there, I think. It's hard to tell from above because you can't see the hills. Anyway, it's about there, and then you've got um, over towards Quailod and the Garth. So this group here, uh, this one, the one in, hang on, let's make it be easier for you to follow what I'm doing here. So the one near Rusison, one up in Clantricent, and the one over here. This would be the buttresses. It's like the wall, if you like, the buttresses of castles that defended uh, into the rich parts of the, the, the Vale and the, the, sort of bit, the posh bits, if you like. So because on the map, uh, buttresses is a long word. It usually gets abbreviated to B-U-T-T. -T. So if you look at the old maps, you will see Arthur's butt. It's not just something to make my children laugh, okay? Anyway, back to the video. So it's Lantrisson Castle, what's left of it? Well, the story goes uh, that most of the stones from here were taken to make Castle Cork. So there's not much left, but originally it would have looked a lot more like Castle Cork, apparently. Let's see what the tourist information says. Well, there we go, some helpful tourist information. Battle of Crecy, here we go. Uh, Middle Ages, period for normal invasion, 1066, Battle of Bosworth, 1485, the death of Richard III, shifted alliances, blah blah blah. Castles such as Lantrisson were key in defence. Uncertain times battles such as Manith Cum The detect Oh, so that's Manith Cum The up there. There's old Don Glendua, I've seen him everywhere. Ah, Thantris and Castle 1910. And you can read the rest of it here. Second only to Cardiff for military importance. Now you can read some of that hopefully. As always, no mention at all. Oh, this being the earliest site of 6th century, yeah. Welsh castles. Wow, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? First day of December. Fendi Geddig. Yeah, that's curious, it's not the highest point. You'd think the castle normally takes the high ground up there. Yeah, wonder why they're here instead. Fabulous views today. A lot of messages last time, people enjoying the green and the sunshine from around the world. <laughs> so let's show a little bit more of the views. We get a better view of the castle. What's left of it? Not a lot. The walk around here can be fit to live in Clantricent. And a friend lived here and he's up and down this hill. <laughs> So down there is the modern, uh, sort of towards Ponticlean, Talbot Green, just to get your bearings. And I would think from around the back of this tump here, you'd see Rusaisen, the Garth would be that way. So southeast. Let's go look from this viewing point, I think. This is why it's best to come in the winter sometimes. Because normally all the foliage on those trees, all the leaves, would block this. Marvellous. And then that's the site of the castle there. Which apparently would have looked like Castle Koch. If you want to look on the maps, that's a fairy tale castle. Little bonus point it was used in a very famous uh, uh, Hollywood blockbuster in the 1950s, I think. The Castle Cork featured heavily. Fantastic film. So you can put the name in the comments. <laughs> Just for fun. And if you're interested in more in the mainstream history of this, there's the Guild Hall. It says open Thursdays to Saturdays. We're on a Tuesday, of course. <laughs> Not sure where to go in anyway. We're supposed to have stuff like Crazy and the uh, Plantricent Arches. I've got a couple of friends of Freeman and Flantricent and have had big booze up every year or two. Ah, just what I mean, I'll do the touristy bit. 
the old bullring central clan Tristan here used to be all pubs <laughs> now it's just a lot of pubs some have been taken over to be other things this was a wonderful shop I hope this reopens after all this madness is over traditional toy shop so I love taking my boys there there yeah, those classic old Welsh style shops <laughs> wonderful Yes, see it from the other side. Wonder who knows who that is. Very famous Welshman. More recent than the period we normally deal with. That is Dr. William Price. He did a lot of work. He's a surgeon, a doctor. Uh, built the Twin Towers in Ponte Preeth. See with his sword there looking magnificent. He re-brought uh, uh, cremations into Wales. First one to do that. I also did a lot of work um, bringing back old Welsh history, and Druidism, all that kind of stuff. It's a fascinating man, good to see him with a statue. We are Dr. William Price, 1800-1893, lived a good old age, surgeon, chartist, self-styled Druid, sculptor Peter Nicholas. Alright, we're looking uh, just about east, I think it is, Tim, isn't it? Uh, south. From the Bull Ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's east. Yeah, you were right, it is east. Okay. <laughs> and uh, on the map it's called Kayai. Kayai of Ir Clan. Kayai is Clan, that makes sense. That means the castle, isn't it? No, it's not. It's, it's, uh, Kai, oh, the place, sorry, Kayai it? is the same as Kai, which is enclosure. So it's a Kayai means fortified, doesn't it? Enclosure or field of the church. Estate land, isn't it? Oh, I guess so, yeah. Because Kaya is a field. Yeah. As well as nice. So, um... So the church is on the higher ground than the castle, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, it might be interesting to see if we've got any information there that... Uh, this is just <coughs> an OS map and not a... Yeah. Um... Well, it looks very oldie, smart, oldie up, map. isn't it? It doesn't look like it'll have any ruins or anything. It's very well maintained. That's yeah, I'm looking more north now from Clan Tristan. So you see up there's Billy Gwynn, where we're going to be going. That's Arthur's Buttresses. Or Arthur's Butt, as my boys like to call it. And there's a cracked mound there. That'll be very interesting to have a closer look at. You pan around this beautiful countryside. A load of whatever's spinning away. So we'll be up. Where? Oh, I'm shooting into the sun, so you might not see it too well. Well, that's the Slantris and Church, very beautiful. And I think this is the path we're going to be following up to Billa Gwent there. Yeah, we just met the most wonderful gentleman. I should have filmed him, really. 84 years old. Fantastic. He says you can't go strip to Billy Gwent anymore. They put um, water board, something in there, private property, you have to go all the way around. The other way's blocked off, but he knew a way, which he told us. So you dip down, look for this row of cottages. Dip down, up and around again, and you get there. What a wonderful man he was, and uh, I'd like to thank him. I should have filmed him, put him on here really, shouldn't I? I want to say as well, over those hills, sorry, in the distance, that is North Devon. Always amazes me how close it all is to the, the Severn and the sea and everything. Anyway, let's see if we can find this. Robin... Tim of galloped off. Oh, there they go. If one's out, my mom's out of breath. I have to keep running to keep up and then run ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a swathe through it, but it's it's that's part of it, but it's up to the left. Well, towards Rusice in that way, is it? Yeah. And this first hill's the one we saw from Rusai somewhere we're up there, near the Llan or yeah. Skyra Llan. And then you've got um, the Garth is over, <laughs> over again behind that. Marvellous views, isn't it? What a great place. Yeah. Is that Penarth down there? Or is that further along? And that, that sort of falls well, away. That's when, though, where the mast is there. Yeah. This propeller you see sticking up, that is uh, 
Peterston Super Ely, between Peterston Super Ely and St Fagans, that's actually St Inish, where that windmill is. Uh, and half head is probably that little knobbly bit before it drops down, and you can just see, you can just see to the left, you can see Flat Home or Steep Home, yeah. at the top of the island in the channel there. That's the North Devon coast, the bit in the very distance. Or probably Somerset actually, it's probably Exmoor. No, yeah, probably probably Exmoor, even the even the what's the other one? Quantox. Yeah. I just can't get over the elevation now. Yeah, that roof like so. Oh, it's the steepness. Isn't you? You'll be blown away. You can see it there, can you? Mm. Oh, I can't wait to get up there. <laughs> ah. The old fella, very helpful, knew exactly where we are going. And there's the public right away, there's the footpath. There's Tim shooting me, shooting Tim, shooting me. And here we go, here's the bit I've wanted to go up for so long, all my life. And driving past, you'll see from the views on the bottom. Well, that's the famous uh, castle of the Norman Lake there. Norman Deco, which over time has become Tesco. And Rob and Tim. Across this amazing vista. North Town Tristan. Well, Ponticlean. Town Tristan's on the hill technically, but there's the old place, San Tristan Golf Course. It's rather impressive. But what I'm more interested in, I'd like to draw your attention to, is this hill here, which has struck me for a long time now. It's having very straight edges, and the whole thing looks suspicious of something. And Tim was saying there's a tumulus marked over on this side. But if you think about it tactically, this is the valley that the castles are designed to defend. It's a very narrow valley, difficult to come through. And this is why you get the fortifications which you're going to see at the top of the hill here. But there's not a lot of point in putting castles on one side and not the other. You just go over that hill and come around no trouble. And it's got Arthur's buttresses, not just Arthur's butt. And as you know, I'm always very suspicious when there's lots of these evergreen trees planted anywhere. So if someone out there wants to have a good look at all the LiDAR information, you can work out where we are. Uh, so uh, just down from Clantricent, opposite Clantricent. And uh, that definitely proper exploration. So if ever all those trees get cleared away, I reckon you're going to find uh, ramparts, all sorts. And the whole thing even looks like, I know it sounds crazy, um, you have to know the full story, but it looks like a huge pyramid under there. And that was there. That's a bit of a wild one. That's a long way away. Just throwing it out there. And uh, oh, while I'm chatting to you, the fellas have started going back up again. You see Tim's head like a little white beacon, <laughs> bobbing away. Thanks for waiting, Tim. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this is really old, by the look of it. You got all the ancient walling embedded into the, the mud there and it goes right around the hill by the looks of it. So it's a really old structure and you can see more of the stonework there which may have been added later. Yeah. Well, it does seem to enclose the whole thing doesn't it? It does. It would be great to know what was actually on top of here. Because you, you get the impression that I mean the views across there are staggering they will see even more from the top now but it's an unbelievable position, isn't it, for, for defence. This is a commanding view, isn't it? Like Tim was saying, it's very reminiscent of the Port Talbot Manudinas situation where you've got two hills and you've got that valley right down below. Yeah, yeah, because it's really steep, isn't it? I'm not great with heights, I'm just going to show people. This drops, I mean, it's almost straight down. Fantastic. It looks like some sort of Martillo Tower or something else, almost Napoleonic that one, so uh, 
let's keep pushing along so what I want to show is the other valley how you can't come down here either yeah this really is the choke point that blocks everything all part of this great uh, fortress to Morgan back for me Tim <laughs> <laughs> he's galloped off it's a man on a mission today this is where it all comes together you've got you've got a view of the complete South Wales coast from here you've got views over to um, uh, Clanbad, uh, over to um, Toyn Caradoc, over towards, around the back here, over towards um, Manadagaya. And you can see all the way up to probably some of the beacons in the background. In a very extreme distance. Um, I'm quite sure you've got over here you've got some of the Gwent mountain tops in the far distance over there so an impressive area all around isn't it it is we've got the horses always people don't realize what a horse country Wales is hello oh I should have bought an apple with me now sorry boys girls <laughs> I remember from down in the town itself, down by the bull ring, I was looking up at a what looked like a proper mound or a tumulus. We hear this from the other side, and it's very clearly is one. So I have to check on the map, see if that's marked. What do you think? What do you think about it, eh? I woke up feeling a little hoarse this morning. Ha <laughs> ha! Why the long face? Oh wow, how'd you get up there, Rob? I flew. You flew? Oh, there's the stairs inside. Oh, there's the stairs. <laughs> so you flew. Didn't see the stairs then. Oh, how cool is this? Oh, this is this is for your 360 degree. Wow, this is a real viewing point. Okay, we're just coming up the steps of the top of the tower on the top of Arthur's butt. And just to give you an idea of the surrounding terrain. You've got Rue Saison just there. We're on the top of Arthur's Butts and you can see the the trench dug out there and the wall is still there. They're still walling inside the banking. And look at the command you've got from up here down below. Across to the other hill and then you've got the plain of Glamorgan in front. Devon, Somerset, and right back round you've got Cardiff there, just on the dip. So it just gives you an idea of the elevation you've got and the, and the link up to all the other forts of Glamorgan. Eastwards, northwards, all the way around. Fantastic. This area in front of me is what I think is the original castle site. This would be a defensive site. It's got these lovely little hills on it. It'd be wonderful to do some proper archaeology up here. It's just a field with horses in it. Ah, amazing. There's no no attention drawn to this at all. But you can see from a strategic point of view, from the fortress Glamorgan, just how crucial this spot is. Oh yeah, see this uh, busy looking roundabout and dual carriageway. If you follow that down, on the right, just as it rises, that little hill there, am I doing this correctly? That is where the Miskin Miskin, the Miskin Manor place is. The college would have been there on the left. More churches there. And as you spin around there and you start to see all this area is forming its defensive bulwark. You've got the south coast behind those hills with all the cliffs. And if you went further around, eventually you come to uh, Ogbo and the Aweni. And that's where the, the, the army is supposed to have landed from up the Aweni and progress their way up the river towards uh, the Battle of Baden. And you can see now how close everything is, because, uh, well, Baden's further over that way, follow the Oretney River that way. And then we come back around here. Any invading armies coming from the north, down through the valleys, have to cut through here, which is why I think this hill opposite is absolutely crucial. Uh, as useful as this place we're sitting now is, for guarding this valley, uh, or incidentally, behind that hill, over that way, is towards Caer Caradoc. So 
You see, everything's only a few miles away. It's the roads make you think everything's further because you really have to drive a long way around. But as the crow flies, as the horse trots, without all the houses and roads and things, it's not that far. So St. Peter's Church, a couple of hills that way. Uh, I think this must have been, it's called Arthur's Buttresses on the maps. There's got to be more fortification there. So you carry on going around these gorse, we always see on these ancient sites. The water supplies, well, I got put on the hill, I suppose. <laughs> so you don't know what's been lost there. And we don't know if this mound might be partly spoiled from that. But there we go, get the old maps out and have a good look. So you've got all going over that way towards Tonnerevile and up those valleys. You can see what a defensive position this is. You've got to bring an invading arm, have to come through the valleys or around the valleys. Or you've got the sea garden, the seven behind, with the high cliffs along the south coast of the Vale of Glamorgan. You even see it on the Vale of Glamorgan badge, the three cliffs or the cliff symbol. And there's only a few inlets which are also fortified to stop any invading forces coming that way. So we're almost around the 360. So heading off uh, from the northish direction. Just trying to get my bearings a bit. You see those massive cum, uh, coking works. So Bayside is just over there. And then you come through that area and we're back round again. Oh, in this area, the foreground is Flantris and Common, uh, where there's been uh, famous battles in, uh, well, English Civil War for a start, about Flantris and Common. I had the pleasure of going to reenactment by the Seal Knot Society when I was a child. It stayed in my mind. I hope they do that again. That was wonderful. And the other thing, of course, as you mentioned before, this little village or town of Flantrissant, probably to do with all those pubs, I'd imagine, because all the drovers and farmers and the people from far around would all come into Flantrissant, and that would be a great recruiting post. And that's what the archers for, you know, Krejci, Agincourt, going back all those hundreds of years. And if you're directly descended, as my friend Julian Burnell, I'll give him a mention, the Burnells, big strong lads, uh, all rugby players, they would have been uh, your ancient archers and they still got Freeman status in Flantrissant. <laughs> Which every few years, it's only seven years, someone can correct me on that. They do beat the bounds, it's called, where they go around the outskirts of Flantrissant, marking out the area. But of course, what we're looking at is much older. I mean, that's all recognised. We're trying to find, please can we have some more recognition of the 6th century and what was going on pre-Norman Welsh history, not when we were just mercenaries of foreign kings, but when this land was its own kingdom. And what a fabulous spot was, and you can see from here why this would be the centre of this little net, particular network of fortresses. So there you go, Arthur's Buttresses. Uh, if you look on the map, it does say Arthur's Butts, all right? And um, yeah, so come up, it's easy to get to. I mean, there's loads of maps, Flantrissant. Oh, one thing I want to say about Flantrissant, uh, just, just throw this in at the end, a little nugget at the end, is that uh, uh, the, the conventional translation, what it's accepted to mean, is Church of the Three Saints, Clan Tree Sant, makes sense, right? And they are Ifdid, Gwino, and Tuvodu, okay? Now, a lot of people, <laughs> going back to Craig Walter's conversations uh, years ago, now this Gwano appears everywhere and I sort of feel a bit strange about this guy because it's sort of he's beautiful and holy. I sort of wonder if he's uh, a, a, a saint of convenience, if you like, because um, if you go back on the Babylonian star maps, you'll also see that those places attributed to Saint Gwano have other meanings of the Babylonians. So you'll see more of that in the star maps. And what also struck me, if you go to the old records of this area, there was a church here or a core, as they call it, where they prayed 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Uh, it's called a core, C-O-R, probably where we get the root of the modern word uh, choir and circle and all these things. And the point was they had 300 saints up here to do that. Now in Welsh, uh, the 300, Trichant, sounds an awful lot like Trisant. So it could be the church of the 300 saints. Maybe not just the Church of the Three Saints. So I just want to think about. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that visit of Arthur's butt. <laughs> Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. There's so much more going on with the channels, such as live feeds and interviews. We're also working as part of Britain's Hidden History to reprint books, produce new books, and generally try and bring more awareness 
of British history that just isn't taught in the British schools anymore. It used to be, used to be, this used to be history as it was taught, but it's fast disappearing and so are the sites. We've also got how to read hieroglyphics using the ancient language at Cymraeg or Welsh and you really be, be, will be amazed. So check out the Facebook group, the website, get involved and please we do need help to keep this project going. So if you could pop by the Patreon site, become a supporter, just drop a couple of quid a month in, that would be fantastic. Or why not go to Cymraeglyphics dot com and buy some of the books so until the next time thank you and have